What's up everyone, this is Adam coming to you. I want to announce a new blog I'm going to start called 50 States. I was thinking that perhaps an idea in our minds could be likened to a subatomic particle. Uh, it can be in multiple states when it's in its wave state and then you observe it and it becomes something different. Perhaps that's like an idea in our mind. Uh, in recent months and years I've had uh, one after another large-scale ideas. I have more than 50 of them that I've been trying to uh, see where they could go. Some of these pertain to crises taking place around the world, from the climate crisis to discussions in medicine, uh, ideas for technology, um, addressing some of these issues facing all of us around the world. There was an issue on a film set where someone got hurt. I do have these moments where I come up with ideas and if I look back, uh, going back to when I was a young boy, I more often than not, if I come up with something, there's some there there to it. Sometimes there's so many, I would, uh, I feel as if I'd like to just share them since it's tough to do even one of these, let alone more than one. So I might be putting these out on a blog called 50 States. I will put a list below of the kind of places my mind has gone from, uh, again, topics in medicine and uh, biomedical engineering, climate engineering to physics. Uh, I even had an idea about when life begins in the womb. There's a short performance I could provide. I've put it in front of some friends who are cis female and they said it was pretty interesting. So check out this blog. The first two I'd like to uh, put down have to do with issues that I've been working with for a long time as a uh, person with Middle Eastern and Jewish roots working in the Arab American comedy, music, theater uh, scene in New York City for more than 20 years. There's a project on my website that I'd like to send you to. There's also a long piece that I created this summer about the climate and how important it is as far as elections coming up and ways in which I wish we had all been better educated and brought together to see the real severity of it uh, happening as we speak throughout this whole summer and what it means for elections in November and beyond. So uh, I'll put a link to that below as well. Thank you so much for listening. Peace, blessings. And as we move ahead with elections and, and other crises that are facing all of us, I hope we can keep the biggest picture in mind and fit as many folks into that picture as we can. Much love and blessings to all. While I have you, I'd like to put down another example of one of the ideas and places where I see conversations a lot of folks have, but maybe see a slightly different take on things. That's about the Second Amendment. Unfortunately, we have, we have had so much gun violence going for, for years now, far too much in schools, public spaces, uh, and there's a debate about guns right now. I even heard Roxanne Gay on the radio the other day discussing how she's now a, a gun owner and why it's appropriate for in any number of reasons. Not once in that discussion, and in so many of the discussions I've heard on, you know, in the media about gun violence, I never hear people discuss what I feel is the most important part of what's on the page on the Constitution. That's um, it, the, the words of the, of the Second Amendment are not just right to bear arms. There's more words in the sentence. A well-regulated militia being necessary to secure the freedom of the state, the right of the people to bear arms shall not be infringed. There's four parts in that sentence. I hear a lot of people on the quote unquote left discuss, hey, where's your well-regulated well militia when you walked into that nightclub and started shooting? Where's, how does a musket relate to an AR-9? What's a bump stock? How could they possibly have predicted, you know, military grade weapons? To me, that's actually, none of that has actually to do with the core of the argument. I wish, I think I saw Justice Breyer say this, but it doesn't come up in any of these discussions that we're unfortunately forced to have over and over. To me, the primary core of that, of that whole sentence is the second part. You're trying to secure the freedom of the state. It's about the collective. It's about keeping the collective free and secure. That's the primary part. The second part is that you should have a well-regulated militia ready to go, you know, in case of an emergency. The third most important part is that it would be great if we could keep a gun in the house for these occasions. That to me has to be in our conversations much more often. I hope this isn't new to too many people but I wish we would really have this break this down every time. And unfortunately, there's so many times now and it has to stop. Maybe with people, you know, using the Second Amendment to make decisions into the future, 
At minimum, keep that in mind. It's about keeping the state free and secure. We're doing this new experiment uh, on these shores, different than the monarchy that we're trying to get away from. If a guy gets into the White House and starts coming over the hill trying to take our stuff, we should be able to have a militia to protect us all. Not one person, not me and my family, not me against my neighbor. That's what's on the page. We have these discussions about the Supreme Court justices who are originalist and textualist. Well, that's what's on the page. The second component, keeping the state free and secure, is required for this new experiment we're undertaking. Everything else is secondary, having a militia, and then third is having a gun in the house to get that going. I saw one person describe how it might have been white, white landowners who were hoping to be able to easily protect each other against newly freed slaves. Even that, to my mind, as horrifying and disgusting as that is, is about keeping a group safe, is about keeping the state safe and the collective. It's not one person. It's not you and your family. I hope we can at minimum keep that in mind and maybe keep it in conversations, which I hope we also, I pray we can stop having. We, I hope we never have to have this conversation as one country again. If the same way that people seem to block out that second part of the Second Amendment when they talk about Second Amendment rights, you know, and, and it's just the right to bear arms, that's the only part that resonates with folks. I hope we can also keep in mind the fact that if the founders thought that what they were doing at the outset of this nation were perfect, if they thought it was perfect at the time, they, they would have just said, we have a perfect union. They didn't say that. We said, we're trying to make it more perfect. We're trying to make a more fair and just society versus, you know, I guess on, at least on one level, where we come from with this monarchy, feudalism. We, we have to keep that in mind the same way that folks want to block out that second component of the Second Amendment. Let's make sure that we found, use as a foundation. Are we moving the society towards a fair and balanced fair and just society when we're talking about free speech other some of the other amendments I see Elon Musk tweeting how if we don't elect Trump that's the end of democracy there's such a thing as fake news there's such a thing as news that's exactly 180 degrees wrong I'm not even I don't even have to go into the whole project 2025 stuff it's just look what he does he get Trump when he was in president when he was in power got up on Twitter and told at least three concrete lies a day to my mind, that's re at minimum reckless endangerment. We always had presidents who were corrupt. He took it to like a, a, a World Wrestling Federation kind of level. If So there's all these discussions about free speech, First Amendment rights. Well, the same way you shouldn't block out that second component of the Second Amendment when you want to talk about what rights you have as a citizen in, re in relation to guns, we shouldn't block out the fact that the purpose of the Constitution in this nation is to move towards something more fair and balanced, fair and just. That's a, that's a moral compass on which you can base your decisions on what's free speech and when does it become something different. What's fair and balanced journalism? What's fair and balanced speech? When can I criticize and when can I uh, start to harm so, or endanger someone? Elon Musk right now, what he's tweeting has nothing to do with fair and balance. There's also just such a thing as fair and balanced journalism with respect to the climate, with respect to every issue that affects everyone's safety on earth moving forward. If we can't keep these kind of concepts in mind when we're trying to parse out what's, what's what, what's news, what's fake, what's coming across our phones, who's permitting it, who's pushing it, then you know I hope we all can really keep the biggest picture in mind as we move forward beyond this election and into the future. Thanks so much.